right, guys, welcome back. Uh, today, I pulled a Cannon Girl. I pulled the new uh, Nat 5 Wind Cannon Girl, Christina. And what I want to do is try her out in Dungeons Unawakened because I've, I've kind of looked into information about her and there's not a lot. Um, but it has been posed a couple times, you know, her and maybe the water one or something like that, not awakening them for multi-hits just to see what they do. And I think the main thought there is Necro. So let's take a look at her here. Skill one is fire attacks three times. Each attack has a 30% chance of a two decreasing the attack bar by 30%. Doesn't do anything in, ne in uh, Necro, but in Giants, that might be helpful. So we'll try her there. The second one is focused five shots. Attack the enemy five times. Each attack has a 50% chance to inflict continuous damage for one turn. Uh, and it's reasonable in four turns, cools down to three turns. And then her passive is Koi Revenge. Every time she's attacked, uh, her attack of the next, her next turn goes up by 15%. So, yeah, that's what it does. <clears throat> it accumulates up to five times, but as an attack-based monster, I can't imagine, I mean, her getting hit five times and getting to use this skill. Maybe it does, maybe it doesn't, I don't know. Um, but I think it's attack per unit, not like multi-hits. So she really has to be hit by five different units, which seems pretty unlikely, but we'll give it a shot here. So that's her. Mine is ruined very tanky. I want her to do as many hits as possible and live speed. HP, HP, you can see those are not maxed. Here are the other runes. Um, her HP is pretty high. Attack, middling, speed, eh, and with accuracy, I want her to land her debuffs. So we'll take her into some dungeons and see what she does. Let's do giants first. We'll take off him and add in the cannon girl. He works um, really well, the barbaric king. All right, here she is, and let's go. Okay, so let's fire it up. There's her five shots. She landed three debuffs, so slightly above average. She'll average two and a half at 50% each, so it'll either be two or three on average. Sometimes you'll get lucky, sometimes you won't, um, but that's what you're gonna expect there. Lucian's doing Lucian things. There's the squall. She goes before the galleon, so it's not representative of a well-tuned team. My galleon's a little bit slower because he runs dungeons and doesn't have to be that fast. There's the additional turn, lots of hits. Really, I want to see how her bar control works on the giant. She's got a pretty cool animation. I like how she holds that gun. I was pretty excited to, to pull her because the odds of me getting a dupe are pretty high, so not getting a dupe was very nice. All right, there's the attack decrease. We did that. Lucian one, Lucian two. All right, here comes him. She's coming around. Lands all five dots, which is pretty nice. Reduces the attack bar. Squall. And we're done. Nice, another reduced attack bar. So the reduced attack bar is really nice. Um, but there would be no reason to not um, skill up her third or awaken her for her third for more AoE for giants. So I, I think leaving her unawakened for giants is not, not a good idea because she's just more AoE, you know? All right, so here's my normal team. It's normally five twins, um, but we'll do four twins and her for Necro. This is where I think maybe most people will consider uh, unawakening these girls and using them. I don't know that that's the best call, but it's worth looking at, and hey, I have one, and I have the opportunity to look at it before I awaken it, so we'll we'll see what happens. Moving into wave two. She's not my fastest. And her damage is, I mean, she's not here for damage. She's not built for damage. All right, let's look at the boss here. Notice the shield sets. I mean, I know we've probably talked about uh, dungeons quite a bit, but you want some shield sets for the reflect and any incidental damage you'll take they'll keep their shield sets up through most waves, and it just keeps them alive longer, especially in Necro, it's very handy. All right, she gets an additional turn, decreases attack bar. I really like the decreased attack bar. I wanna, I'm gonna take a look at her as compared to similar units here in just a second, but we'll let this run finish. All right, there's her three, there's another. She procked into that, so she got six hits out of the way, and we're killing this guy pretty good here. There's the five hits into the additional turn. So that's eight hits right there. I mean, pretty, pretty nice if you're trying to kill something. We don't get a monster taken. She does not revenge, but she gets the plus one. There's a three hit into the twins, into more twins, and we're done. So <clears throat> one thing I've noticed is I've run her, I ran her in this while leveling her up, and she does a really good job of breaking the shield and clearing the dungeon before someone gets pulled. So if you're having trouble with that, it's not a horrible idea. I don't know that... Um, Unawakening her is the way to go because you get a nat five, you want to awaken it. But I thought it'd be fun to look at. Um, a couple of things I wanted to look at are her first skill compared to Triana's first skill. 
So it's three chances at 30% uh, uh, attack bar down by 30. So it's three chances, each attack is a 30% to decrease by 30. 30% decrease by 30. All right, Triana is uh, attack bar absorb by 15% with a 30% chance and a sleep for one turn with a 10% chance. And it scales off speed. That's pretty good. Um, since it's an absorb, it's a you take 15 and you get 15. So it's still a plus. It's a plus 30 to her versus a, ch a chance at a minus 90 to your opponent. 30% um, chance, same chance, except she has it three times. So she gets three shots at 30, whereas Triana gets one shot at 30% of proccing, I guess. So she gets one shot at 30 plus a 10% of a sleep, um, whereas Christina gets three shots at 30. So I, that to me was the monster that seemed the most similar. Um, the other thing I want to look at is this one, focus five shots, attacks the enemy five times. Each attack has a 50% chance to inflict continuous damage for one turn. I immediately thought of Orochi. So let's go look at Orochi and just take a look at them compared to each other. All right. Looking for a ninja. He's going to be unawoken because I've never built him. It's this one here. Storm and Gale. Rapidly throws six ninja stars consecutively, inflicting continuous damage for one turn if you get a crit. This attack will deal more damage according to speed. So this is his third, whereas that's her second. So that's not really an equal comparison. This is six chances, and it's 100% um, if you crit. So you got to build him full crit. Um, so it's six dots, 100%, basically, if you crit. I mean, you still got to do the, the check, but hers is a 50% proc. Um, and his second is an attack bar decrease damage based on speed. So I don't know. It's... Uh, it's similar to this, and it's, it has a similar function. Um, she's kind of like an Orochi in a way. This is a one-term continuous damage, scaling on speed, scaling on speed, attack bar, and then the uh, the six dots. So that's the other thing that seemed kind of similar. Um, additionally, her third skill, or right now it's her third skill. I guess it'll be her fourth when I awaken her. Um, Koi Revenge increases the damage out by 15%. Each time you attack, this effect accumulates up to five times and resets whenever your turn ends. Let's look at Fire Monkey. Gains immunity against an ability effects, and your attack power increases by 20% whenever you're attacked. Accumulates up to 10 times. So this is a attack power boost, um, whereas hers is a 15% damage boost. So whatever damage you would do, it goes up 15%. Um, this stacks 10 times, so attack power goes up to 200%, and it's permanent from time to time. I don't know. I feel like hers resetting is not quite as good as this, but you know, maybe it's not meant to be. It's a little bit different. Uh, so just little bits of comparisons, things to look into. It's kind of interesting. Um, let's look at Jaeger as well. I feel like Jaeger has a similar skill. He is also a nat five, but he's an LD nat five. So, you know, sometimes they get a little more juicy uh, buffs than their regular counterparts. Gains immunity against inability effects, increases the attack by 20% each time your allies are attacked. So this is the same thing as the monkey. Um, same thing, uh, increases up to 10 times when your allies are attacked. So Fire Monkey is when he's attacked, Jaeger is when allies are attacked, I suppose. Um, and he gets really, really beefy and crazy. So another kind of comparison there. So <clears throat> I've heard people talk about her as an RTA monster and I'm not sure, I mean, I kind of get what they're saying, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna really build her for real for RTA and take her for a tour. We're also going to awaken her and see where that goes, but I kind of wanted to focus on her as a multi-hitter today just to kind of take a look um but as far as rta capability i think they're talking about the attack bar decrease is good the dots are pretty good but again both of these don't care about immunity so if you're not facing an immunity monster you know you could bring a ciara um which does raw raw damage um whereas this one's going to do damage via dots a little bit of attack bar um i don't know how useful this will be in rta it's going to buff the attack a little bit um, but, you know, she has to get hit, so I don't know. And then her final skill, we'll go take a look at it here, because I think it's worth looking at. She is, un oh, she is not woke, Christina. Um, this guy here, the rolling cannon, I think this is what most people think of as an RTA skill. Attacks all enemies with a cannon gun. The damage increases in proportion to the number of allies alive and the attack power of all allies. So... You know, I, I watched uh, Sean B test her out, and it did okay damage when she was built for damage, but most AoEers will do that. Um, is she a great AoE monster? I don't I don't know. It seems like she'll be compared to Lucian. Is she as good as Lucian? No. You know, she's just not. 
She's got better stats. Um, but yeah, no, not as good as Lucian. She doesn't ignore defense. The only thought here is that I haven't seen her tested in late game RTA where the the attack power is increasing as the timer goes down. And once people are alive, the attack power goes up. Maybe this thing just starts just one-shotting things. Um, and we're going to take a look at it. My only thought is if that's the case, it might be a win more kind of a skill. Like there's a point when your RTA match swings and the battle's decided. And if all your allies are alive at that point, you've probably won whether or not you have rolling cannon. So that's that's the one thing I'm, I'm not sure about. So anyway, um, that's, that's all for today. I just wanted to look at our Unawakened, run some dungeons and kind of settle that question and we'll wake her up and we'll go do some rta once i ruin her a little bit more appropriately um in the future if you're wanting to test one of these guys uh unawakened the i think violent revenge is going to give you the most multi-hits for your for your bang for your buck the first skill is three attacks the second skill is five on her um with a violent she has a 22 percent chance of getting another three or five and then with a revenge a 100 percent chance or a 15 percent chance of it proccing into three more hits so it does quite a bit um, she's super stable in Necro if that's something you're interested in. Mine will not be skilled up for a while because there are two Nat 4 family members and maybe I think the light one might be a Nat 4 also. Um, so in theory, maybe Comp to us will release one as an HOH and I can uh, can buy five extra skiller up with 10 or maybe I'll pull some. So I'm not going to use Devilmon on something that can be skilled up with Nat 4s. So I hope that was interesting. Kind of a weird, weird unit reveal. Um, but... I'm happy to have one, and we'll we'll dig into some content. If anybody wants to see her in a certain setting, we'll probably uh, bring her into Guild Wars and kind of see how that goes. Um, feel free to let me know, and we'll we'll dig into it. All right, guys, uh, thanks for watching, and I will catch you in the next one. Take care.